Welcome to my channel, Blissfully Single Bean. I'm your homegirl, Bean, and yes, I'm your Blissfully Single One. First of all, before I go on with all of this, I'm smacked. <laughs> it's Friday. It was a long day at work. I came home. I was sipping. It's the anniversary of Whitney Houston's death, and that one hit hard. That one hit hard. So I came home, I was sipping, I was watching TV, I was tweeting. But at the end of the day, it's like, all right, Sabine, you have to get Sabine, Bean, aka Beans for Reezy. It's like, all right, Sabine, you have to get back into it. I'm going to be honest and completely transparent. I'm not sure if I'm going to edit this because I'm like, all right, girl, you need to get content up. You need to speak with your people. So... But anyway, I'm going to be as honest I, as I can be with all this Carbell mixed with vodka. Child, I have to work out tomorrow morning, so I'm drinking as much water as I can possibly drink so I can make up and make this Orange Theory um, fitness appointment. So anyway, listen. First of all, I'm going to start this by saying I apologize. I apologize because I was doing my YouTube and I was talking about, you know, love and marriage Huntsville and I was talking the celebrity gossip and, you know, I was interacting, interfacing, like I was building relationships with the people who followed me and I much appreciated it, but I was selling my house in New York. I ran into so much difficulty and please hit my blog up at blissfullysinglebean.com so you can see all that I've been through. I'm like, all right, I'm going to put put a pause on everything. And nobody's going to care that I put a pause on er at anything because I wasn't that important. So I did for a few months. And it was, what, two weeks ago. I was like, all right, let me jump on YouTube Studio. You know, let me see what's going on. And, oh, my gosh, my Beanie Pies, my followers, I appreciate you guys so much. I thank you guys so much. Like, I was going through on my comments like, girl, where are you? You disappeared. I hope you, I hope you come back soon. And it's like, oh my God, you guys really want to talk to me? <laughs> and it's like, girl, please understand when you build these platforms, it's connections that you're making with people. And I'm not saying like I'm the biggest YouTuber. I'm not Funky Dineva. I'm not, you know... I want to say Tasha K, but she's going through some things. I, I, I'm just saying, like, you think you put your little YouTube channel together and nobody will, will miss you if you take a break. But I did take a break to deal with some things with relocating to Atlanta. It was messy as hell. <laughs> Please, go to my blog. I got the link below to see how much. It, it was. It was a lot. It was a lot. And I felt like I needed a second to kind of get things together before I came back on YouTube. But the biggest thing was like, no one's going to miss me. Like, who's going to miss me? Who's going to miss me? And then when you check, you know, when you go back to YouTube studio, when you go on Instagram, you, when you go on Twitter, it's like, girl, where are you? We want to hear from you. It's like, oh. I've always had I've always had low self esteem issues and they came from childhood. You know, you're a Haitian girl in Brooklyn and being Haitian wasn't popular when I was growing up. So everyone targeted you, which was very confusing because Haitians, Trinidadians, um the the Guyanese, we we're both from the West Indies, but for some reason Haitians always shoulder the brunt of you know let me stop being cute nobody liked haitians it was haitian booty scratchers haitian body odor like child i don't know how many times i got beat up trying to defend my sister who was quiet and wasn't about that life and my skinny frail act like it was it, it was hard so anyway i say all this to say my self-esteem issues from childhood kind of seep their way into me trying to build up my blissfully single bean youtube channel basically like all right girl you're not putting up any content and no one's gonna miss you 
And I will have to say and thank everyone who left a comment, who left messages. You guys really do like me. And I apologize for being away because I thought it wasn't really a big deal. And in reality, I should have shared the reality of what I was going through, you know. And when I say what I was going through, I sold my house in New York and I had a job ready to go. Here, when I got to Atlanta, I got here in Atlanta. It was another fucking uh, a variant, COVID variant. And I got a call that Monday when I was expecting to start saying, oh, so I, I regret to inform you, you know, we're going to put a pause on trade shows so we don't need you anymore. So I'm sitting here in a hotel room with my two kids and my dog like, girl, you're going to have to find another job. And mind you, when I got to Atlanta, I was about my MFN business. So when I got to Atlanta, we drove 15 hours all together within the span of two days. The first day I drove 13 hours. Second day was two hours. So it was 15 hours all together. Got here, met with my realtor. Hey, Monique. Amazing. I'm going to put Monique's information in this video because she is an amazing realtor. Got with my realtor, Monique. The first house that Monique showed me, I absolutely loved. And I put an offer on it. Offer got accepted. The very next day, I got the call saying I don't have a job anymore because COVID and they're putting a pause on events. I was stressed out. I was stressed out. I had to hustle money and get some job, any kind of job, so that I can buy the home that I really wanted to buy, the home that was perfect for me. Child, suburbs, three stories. I'm on the top floor. My firstborn is on the second. My little Timmy monster is on the third. So listen, I was going through a lot. I was depressed. I wasn't depressed. I wonder I was depressed because I've been through this before. Buying a house, I have to hustle and get it. Because the first time I, I bought a house, I was purchasing a home. I lost my job in the middle of the purchase. Second time I was purchasing a home, I had a job, lost it when I relocated and I had to hustle bunny and do it all again. Like you have to find a job to close on that deal. So I say all this to say, it was hard. It was hard and I felt like creating content was something that I did not need to do because I was dealing with so much. And it's crazy because creating content was something I absolutely had to do. So I can talk to all the 40 something year olds that can get with where, <laughs> you know, that can understand my situation. Um, I needed to get the content out there so I can feel better, you know? Talking to everyone, being theatrical, theatrical, is something that makes me feel good. So it's like, as I was going through this, through this adversity of trying to find a job so I can close on my new home, it's like, all right, I'm, I, I focused on the wrong things. I was like, okay, stop making content. Because I got to focus on getting this job. When in reality, the content is the mental release. The content is the mental health aspect where I can release and talk all of my shit and connect with all of you guys, which I didn't do. So, okay, I say all this to say, I am sorry. And I say all this to say, I am back. And in full transparency... Being theatrical, being on YouTube, having my own channel, having my own space to talk and talk shit makes me happy. I just kind of hate that when I was faced with adversity, I shut everything down. But really, that's kind of the story of my life. When I'm faced with adversity, I don't go on. I just kind of shut down and block everyone out, which is not... The best thing to do, because when you're faced with adversity, 
what you want to do is reach out and connect with people who fucks with you. So, anyway, I say all this to say, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I'm in my walk-in closet, but I'm back. I miss you guys and all of you guys who, you know, sent me DMs, you know, all of you guys who I was checking my YouTube studio and I'm checking comments like, girl, where you at? Like, we miss you. I apologize. I do apologize. And just thank you. Just thank you for every kind note, every DM, every email, every comment that I saw on my YouTube. Like, Full transparency in my walk-in closet with, like, full transparency. I'm not used to being liked. I've kind of had this thing where I don't think people like me. So, every note, every email, every DM, every comment. I love you guys and I appreciate it. I'm not going to sell you guys on anything. I'm like, ah, buy this, buy that. Go to my blog, blissfullysinglebean.com. Listen, I'm using this 12 minutes just to say, I'm 12 minutes? Oh, uh, child, I will be editing this. But 12, 10, 9, 8. This is me in my closet just saying thank you. Thank you for fucking with me essentially and that's that's really it that's really it all right i gotta go to bed so i can make it to orange theory to work out and see what this 43 year old body come do but i've seen all the comments and i love you guys and i appreciate you guys so much you guys take care have a good night and I will be reviewing Ready to Love. I have to pace myself. Ready to Love, I will be reviewing. And then my next review will not be until Love and Basketball when Shawnee decides to release shit, you know, with Brandy Malaysia. Because Shaw, I heard Brandy and Malaysia are going at it, you know. And then Brooke, Brooke, Brooke came back, honey. Brooke got into a fight with Malaysia and Malaysia, as much as I love you and I know you got their hands, but Brooke is a big bitch. So, uh, all right. But listen, I am back and I thank you guys for all the love. And really, that's it. Peace out, guys. Have a good one. Love you. Full transparency. <laughs>